uh, to put, put the uh, proposal on the on the screen that we can uh, look at once again with a fresh eye and see who would be interested in uh, organizing or coordinating organization of those sessions. Could we get slightly uh, bigger font? Or could you enlarge the picture, please? A little bit larger on the screen. So thank you very much. Uh, if, if, I, if I may, a couple of, couple of comments that uh, we need to keep, keep uh, in mind. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, setting the scene, um, if setting the scene session is organized in day zero, it will not be part of the formal uh, uh, chairman's report. Uh, that, that needs to be uh, understood uh, because uh, only IGF meeting itself uh, uh, is uh, reflected in Chairman's report. Um, uh, secondly, I uh, think that we also need to decide whether on the last day uh, in the afternoon, uh, where now closing session is scheduled for uh, three hours, closing ceremony, uh, whether we allocate 90 minutes uh, for uh, workshops uh, and leaving closing ceremony uh, only for last uh, 90 minutes, because if not, uh, then uh, that if we, we need to make decision today because that will impact our decision and work tomorrow. Uh, that will impact number of uh, workshops that we need to select. Um, so let me ask whether all MAG members feel comfortable with the proposal that was worked out during uh, these consultations during lunchtime. I see Cheryl, Marilyn, and uh, Virat, and Hartmut in that order. Please, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to address uh, there was a proposal that was raised in our group to actually combine the IGF plus 10 and the WISIS. And I just wanted to share some of my experience last year in being part of a main session and how I and why I think that I would I would not support merging these two. Last year, you know, I was part of the main session on net neutrality and we thought we had a lot of time in the beginning, and it, it, it was very difficult to keep down the number of participants on the panel, number one. And you know, we tried really hard to, to balance that, yet include everyone. Number two, once we shifted to audience participation, there was even less time. And I think for a lot of these main sessions, it's equally important to make sure that we have a really robust participation from the audience. I think the WISIS and the IGF, um, they're, you know, they do have linkages, obviously, but there's so much there in terms of substance that um, each could easily take up, um, you know, a two-hour slot or three-hour slot. And I think giving those the appropriate time, um, I would be more in favor of, of that approach. Um, second, I, I had mentioned it earlier. I wanted to, um, to offer to co-facilitate uh, the IGF plus 10. I don't know if there is anyone else um, from one of the other stakeholder groups that wants to step forward and, and take that on with me, but I wanted to put that back on the table. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much, uh, Marilyn. 
Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Cade speaking. Um, I am not comfortable with, uh, now that I consider this program, I'm not really comfortable with moving, setting the scene um, outside of the main program. I think it is um, extremely important to have that session within the, um, the full program and also part of the chair's report. So I think we, my view is I'd like to find a way to move it back into, um, in, into the main session. That's my first point. My second point is uh, there are others here who, like myself, uh, are actively engaged in national and regional IGFs. I find the interregional International, the international, interregional dialogue. Um, I'm not, as I said before, I'm not sure it rises to the level of a main session, but it rises to the level to me of needing a big room and an opportunity when all national and regional IGFs who sign up are able to come and participate and a room that is large enough for those who are interested in listening. I've never found much of an audience um, uh, in the main room that's uh, really interested in sitting through reports from the national and regional IGFs, but I have found lots of interest in sharing information across those groups. My third point is um, that um, I'm very interested in the WISIS plus 10 um, session and would be interested in collaborating with others as a uh, co-organizer of that if there are others. Uh, thank you. So thank you very much, Virat. Shimon, there is a, uh, there is a remote uh, online request uh, for, for comment from Subi. Maybe we should, I can yield my slot to her and then come back. If Yes. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, hopefully solved all your problems, and uh, I asked Subi if uh, she would like a floor, but uh, she didn't respond. But uh, um, if if you if you have something, uh, please read it. There was just a request saying, "Can we contribute?" That's all. Ah, okay. Uh, um, please go ahead there. Yeah, continue. So. Um, Quick for comment this time as a, a random mag member. Um, first on, on setting the scene, Mr. Chairman. Um, for the last two IGFs, setting the scene is, um, sorry to use the word, but rather poorly attended. Um, there, is an, there is an objective for setting the scene, which is to try and peep, tell first timers and, and newcomers about what are the sessions and what to expect during the IGF. So in terms of scheduling, I know that it doesn't form a part of the report of the chair, but all it does is tell them uh, what to expect over the four days, where to go, in which room, how to do the color coding. Last year we spent some time trying to explain the fabulous new website that the IGF secretariat had put up with color codes and stuff like that. It doesn't have content. Uh, it shouldn't have content. They try and put speakers in, but actually it should not have content. It should be about what to expect over the next four days, which rooms to go, why did we pick these themes, etc. And that's for the first timer. So I think if it is, so we should rethink what it was meant to be originally, what it has become, and therefore if it's just a description of the four, the four days, then maybe not that important to move it to date. Day, day one, but if you can find a way, I'm not against it, I'm just saying that's what it's meant to do. Uh, with regards to the opening ceremony, a comment was made to check with the hosts. I think I got a thumbs up from the hosts saying we can do this in the morning, but I think they should check if they can, uh, you know, maybe start half an hour late, go into lunch or whatever that, that time slot is, but I think it will be a good idea if you can get the opening ceremony going in the morning, because the challenge is when you don't have opening ceremony in the morning, you waste a full slot, the morning slot is wasted, we can actually use it for a main session in the second half. And, and there is, it's impossible to do any main session before the opening ceremony, so you can have workshops but, or, or something, but you actually have left yourself three and a half days then. So if that can work out, that'll be 
perfect. I support your point, Mr. Chairman, about having a closing ceremony for 90 minutes. That should be sufficient unless there is a, a strong uh, move for that. I think 90 minutes will make a lot of sense, and which also then provides dynamic coalition a second slot of 90 minutes in the second half of day four. That's as as towards the end as you can get in terms, in, if that's what dynamic coalitions wanted, but that'll give them 90 minutes only. Um, on this is plus 10 and IGF plus 10, I'd uh, request that we keep them separate, even though very strong arguments have been made in favor. Here's the, here are the three why we should. These are linked, but different. Uh, so they're not the same. Uh, second, time is not enough. Uh, I think IGF plus 10 would certainly require three hours. It's 10 years of work. It's one of our main purpose. And this is, is not small either. We might be able to wrap it up in 90 minutes to two hours, but it's not. But if you put these two in one three-hour session, and we can't exceed three hours. So if you had a four-hour session, then it's different, but you know, I, I think the Mac can't go over three hours, so that's where we are, which is the other reason why, practical reasons why we need to have it in, on two different days. And, and finally, I think the level of information and participation of VSIS is different from IGF, where a huge amount of you know, na national and regional IGFs might want to contribute. They have three, four, six year experiences they want to contribute. VSIS is quite different. So again, linked but different time challenge, and, and therefore I would request that we keep it for three hours and maybe either 90 minutes and two hours, whatever the facilitators believe will work efficiently for VSIS um, plus 10. Thank you. So thank you very much, Virat. I learned in my life that not, nothing is worse than wounded pride. That's about this random, random mag member. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, I, and I noted that uh, uh, you most probably uh, mixed up uh, orientation session and uh, setting the scene session. In orientation session, you explain color coding. And, I, and, and then in the setting, setting the scene session, you do, uh, let's say, you, you uh, frame minds of participants, those who want to be framed, and, and then tell the, uh, what, what this IGF will be about. And I, I see no reason why orientation session shouldn't be, or couldn't be organized in, on day zero and uh, setting the scene session uh, brought in uh, in day one. That said, w time is running, and I have many, many interventions here. Uh, Hartmut will uh, be the first. I remember that we discussed uh, the possibility to increase the time, not three hours slot in the morning and three hours slot in the afternoon. My first concern is, will there be a breakfast, uh, or excuse me, a coffee break in the middle of each morning and afternoon? So we will lose a half hour. So my proposal is that we start from at nine, work one and a half hour, then have a half hour coffee break, and then again one and a half hour, it's the same in the afternoon. So we need to have three and a half hour in the morning and three and a half hours in the afternoon. This is only to correct this time schedule. But my proposal is to go further, to include a half hour in the morning and half hour in the afternoon. We don't need long time for the, uh, the transfer from the hotel to the conference, it's only 50 minutes. We can be there at nine and work from nine until one. Four hours, we lose only a half hour for the, break, for the coffee break. Then we can have a one and a half hour slot and a two hour slot in the morning. And the same in the afternoon if we start at two and work until six. So we are fighting for time. I am introducing a new factor. The problem, uh, probably the beginning of the discussion of the two hours was the translators. But we have the flexibility that we have United Nations approved translators that we hired 2007 in Brazil, and we will do the same for 2015. So we have extra translators, interpreters, that will work more than two hours, so we have more time to put everything together. So thank, thank you, Hartmut. In the, indeed, uh, the, the uh, half an hour coffee break has not been factored in, and that is absolute must, because coffee breaks also is part, part of the part of the bigger game. Uh, informal consult, uh, or informal contacts and, and conversations uh, is extension of discussions during during the sessions, and and um, so we can do it either 
uh, shortening lunch to two hours lunch seems a bit bit uh, long uh, for that purpose or we can we can start earlier but I think that this this is just a question of technique we can we can um, uh, uh, look at. One thing is clear, sun is rising at 5 and uh, uh, from 5 to 8 everyone can be on the beach and then uh, to, the, to the conference room. Please take it as a joke. I mean, I tried. Uh, <laughs> Mark, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I don't support merging um, IGF at 10 and uh, WSIS plus 10 review. They, I agree with previous speakers that these are separate, though linked, agendas. As I understood it from the discussion this morning, IGF at 10 would consider issues like uh, the role of governments in the IGF and um, the evolution of the IGF. Uh, WSIS, as was articulated very uh, clearly by Mal in particular, it's a much wider scope, and there I thought our intent was to engage in the negotiating dynamics of the of the WSIS Plus 10 review. So that's a, that is a three-hour session. Um, setting the scene uh, on uh, bringing that forward, is it too difficult to actually start the IGF at that stage? Uh, so it, it comes within the scope of the chair's report. If, if, if we do the setting the scene at, I don't know, three o'clock on what is now day zero, is that a possibility to get around that sort of problem? Um, I support shortening the closing session to free up time. With regard to the um, intercessional wrap, uh, that's spelled with a W, um, for the BPFs and the dynamic coalitions, um, I would favor that being on um, day four. We heard in our lunchtime uh, breakout session that numbers drop off significantly uh, by or during day three. Um, so that argues, I think, in favor of days one to three being really on the substance of issues and dialogue and developing uh, solutions and so on through the various uh, workshops and uh, fora and main sessions. So I, I would argue that that um, adds to the argument that we do the intercessional coming together uh, as an output session on the morning of day four. Uh, we'll have had the opportunities to, to um, draw on the, on, the, on the individual BPF and dynamic coalition sessions during one days one, two, and three, as well as, as I say, um, the, uh, the overall sort of articulation of outcomes of, uh, of the IGF seems to be appropriate to do on that final day, but in the morning. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, if I, if I uh, may add a little bit on the uh, subject of WSIS uh, plus 10, there might be also an uh, aspect of consultations with uh, 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 other stakeholders that is part of the UNGA resolution. And as you know, we're still hoping that um, uh, UNPGA will uh, accept our proposal and would organize these consultations that he is asked to do by the UNGA resolution uh, during the IGF meeting. If that will be the case, then of course we will need to uh, accommodate uh, that proposal in some way. And, uh, and I see that, for instance, the uh, second day of the, of the uh, IGF, the main sessions could be sort of earmarked uh, for that purpose the whole day, because if the, we will have uh, substantive consultations on the uh, WSS plus 10 document, so that, of course, would require slightly more than three hours if we're serious about it. Um, uh, and, and also, I, uh, I'm not sure whether that was uh, uh, discussed or, or uh, sort of reward d discussion and, and then decision, but in the previous, before lunch, we spoke that uh, dynamic coalitions, uh, um, best practice forums and policy for next billion would be looked at once in one uh, three-hour slot uh, on, on the second part of the third day. 
and now I see intercessional uh, BFDC and, and DC is uh, all over the place uh, on the second day and then the, on the fourth day and the third day as well. Just a, a, my question to, uh, t to coordinators, Virat, please. But the, so here's what it is. I, intercessional and best practice forums, whether they go with dynamic coalitions or not, given the three-hour slot is undecided. Um, the dynamic coalitions wanted a separate slot. They don't believe they can do this uh, with that. And the, the, one of the facilitators or suggests, peop, uh, Constance suggested that we should do it together. So we put them as two different square brackets. Uh, we put that as day two uh, only because that was what came from the floor, but day three is, is, is completely vacant at this stage. It can go to day three. I think the first question that needs to be decided is whether all three can be done in one three-hour session or not. That's the fundamental question. And then there are three vacant slots, one on day two and two on day three, any one of which can be occupied. So thank you very much, um, Constance. Y yes, thank you. Looking at the, um, the screen, uh, I think we don't need any more of the separate best practice forums if, if we agree that at least the connecting the next billion and the best practices can be in one intersessional main session. Um, then whether or not that session should take place on day three or four, that has been discussed. I think Mark had a preference for day four after the dynamic coalitions. Um, um, in addition to, to this, um, just for, uh, the, the, as the Secretariat will, will compile the, the contributions, um, the best practice forums then need to take place, in any case, before the main session on intersessional. Last year we had a little mix up on that, so it's important that this year they really take place before the, 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 the intersessional main session, um, hoping that dynamic coalitions would, would join the effort if, if they're willing to cooperate in the context of that main session. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mexico. Thank you, Chair. I would like to go back to the proposal of um, having together with Plus 10 and IGF at, uh, at 10. And uh, I understand the reasons that uh, some of the colleagues have said, but uh, from my view, the, this will be the only chance that the, our ministers will have to, to listen and to have all the ammunition they will need to, to for the process in New York. So it's, it will be a very good opportunity to have them there. And uh, if we separate them, I understand there are different uh, issues. One is the assessment of what IGF has done over the 10 years. But at the same time, we have to present that to, to, to the ones that are going to take decisions in New York. And this will be the ministers. And it will be a very good opportunity to have uh, the highest level, all these decisions being um, from bot, uh, up down to the colleagues that will be negotiating. So we believe that it will have some merit in having it at least uh, in the same morning. Thank you, Chair. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, Fiona? Yes, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, and to thank colleagues for all the work they did in the break to put together a fulsome program. Just um, an observation that in previous years of the IGF, we've had a variety of um, three-hour thematic sessions. And I noticed that in this proposed schedule, there's not a single, a single thematic three-hour block that people want to tackle at this year's IGF. Instead, it's very focused on sort of, um, you know, obviously appropriately the 10-year anniversary of IGF, WISIS plus 10, and sort of highlighting all the intercessional work. Is there a, a particular reason we don't want to actually have a thematic session, or is that to be discussed later? Just out of curiosity, just an observation. Do you have any specific proposal on topic? Uh, please, please think also about the question that Fionn raised. Uh, so we have remote participant. Uh, yes, uh, it, this is Subi. I will now uh, unmute her. Everybody.
everybody and good afternoon. I'm really happy to have found my voice back. I think this is indeed testimony to the power of TIGF. Um, I do want to put this on record that uh, a, a learning experience trying to participate remotely um, and online. I do want to say that as facilitators, it's indeed a very difficult job to actually take all inputs on record, and we did try posting inputs, but I don't know if uh, there was remote moderation available during the lunch break while the main session deliberation was on. So a couple of comments. Um, I, I think it's fantastic that we have more first-time MAG members proposing to be facilitators of main sessions. We really need to encourage that and provide all the support we can. Um, I believe IGF at 10 is a fantastic proposal, but I also see that I, there is synergy in combining it with Business Plus 10. Um, last year, we handled two large chunks and they were interlinked conversations on the evolving internet ecosystem as well as the way forward for IGF. I see a similar synergy. Um, in terms of interactivity, we did have talking heads, but we decided to flip the conversation and did not wait for the speeches to end. We kept the session interactive all through. Um, second point, I believe that a session on what's in it for governments and read roles and responsibilities for stakeholders is still a separate session. It is a different session from that of IGF at 10, and I do believe that day one, um, first half would be an appropriate slot for that, and as we do originally proposed, to keep uh, IGF at 10 and VCS plus 10 review on day two might be a consideration for colleagues of the MAG. And third, um, I did suggest that if we can also attempt to ensure that there is youth participation as speakers across main sessions, it would be something that would be very, very heartening to see. Um, that's all for now. Thank you. So thank you very much, Suri, for your uh, suggestions. Uh, Susan? Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I would like to acknowledge uh, what our colleague Fiona said about um, the kind of, I don't want to say inwards facing, but the, the focus on um, these, having the main sessions focus on the various um, different fora that they have focused on. And I think that in terms of the three main session slots that are remaining, these holes in the Swiss cheese, I guess you could say, um, <laughs> I think that perhaps, would it be possible to address uh, these holes in light of our workshop evaluations tomorrow? Um, because I feel like, uh, again, it might be an opportunity to bring a few different workshop proposals together, at least um, to get creative there. Uh, but if there was one suggestion I would like to make for a substantive topic, a thematic topic for a main session, I would suggest uh, network neutrality. Thank you. So th thank you very much. Uh, Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Cade speaking. A couple of comments. Um, if we are fortunate enough to uh, have a yes from the PGA, from the United Nations uh, President of the General Assembly, to either attend in person or to send someone, uh, or from the co-facilitators, then I think that really um, changes the structure of the session on WSIS plus 10. If we're doing it ourselves, that's kind of one thing, and we would end up with a transcript, would end up with an organizational structure that we have a lot of control over. But if we are fortunate enough to have um, these senior guests uh, and participants from New York, um, I think we would need to accommodate uh, more time, as the chair suggested, and also understand that the consultation would probably be run by them. Um, so one way to possibly look at this might be to um, plan the, um, the session for um, IGF at 10 
and this is plus 10, perhaps on the same day, but with the idea that if we get a yes from uh, the PGA's office, that we move um, the session in order to be able to have uh, more time to go into um, a consultation, including on the zero draft. Um, that would take a, us uh, asking for some flexibility in the schedule from um, other uh, main session um, organizers. Uh, and it may be that the thematic um, uh, ideas that are being raised, uh, such as in the merging of some of the workshops, uh, we might be able to look to those groups for providing that flexibility. I'll just make a comment about the selection of topics for thematic workshops. I'd rather we wait until we go through tomorrow's session and also see if we can pick one or two topics that we haven't done before, uh, if at all possible, but to postpone that decision until tomorrow. So thank, thank you very much. Um, I, I think we... Um, we will not conclude this uh, topic today. It doesn't look like that. So we have uh, a proposal on net neutrality as, as, a, as a topic for main session uh, that was put forward by Susan. I would like to hear your reactions on, on that. Um, uh, Cheryl, please. Well, my initial reaction, I guess, since it, it is a timely topic, but we already had a large main session on that last year, and so it would afford an opportunity this year to do something different. I do agree with Marilyn's point, RE themes and waiting tomorrow, because a lot of the proposals that we've seen that have come in from the community, they may in fact shape our theme and may lend support for, you know, final support for some of these other main sessions in terms of which of these different workshops are going to have themes that are going to run up and support these main sessions. Um, so that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was worth of three. Uh, Mark, please. Thank you, Chair. Mark of our UK government. Uh, net neutrality, first of all, um, there are workshop proposals. Um, I'm just quickly scanning uh, uh, the top 60, but um, let's look at that tomorrow uh, in the light of uh, the proposals on net neutrality. Uh, my general feeling is if there are um, very, very strong proposals to discuss net neutrality in workshop format, I think that sufficiently covers it in the light of previous um, focus of the IGF on net neutrality. My, I, I have two suggestions, um, again, for looking at tomorrow, I, I guess, uh, as, as the MAG, on thematic um, main sessions. First of all, uh, we, we may have lost sight of the overarching theme of this IGF relating to, to sustainable development. And then secondly, um, so maybe you know, a main session related to that uh, theme uh, is arguable. Um, secondly, um, the number of proposals in the area of rights and freedom of expression uh, that were received, um, again, I think that is worth exploring in terms of a main session on, on the area of rights, the free internet, uh, freedom of expression, uh, rights uh, generally and so on. Maybe there's scope there for identifying a main session thematic uh, topic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Flavio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, during the, the, the lunch uh, session, I made a proposal for uh, another main session. We still have maybe two or three uh, uh, slots left, and a proposal that we would could uh, take stock of the Net Mundial Declaration. Uh, it will be uh, 18 months uh, after the, 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 the event in Sao Paulo in April 2014, and we, we could discuss uh, which is the real impact of the, the Net Mundial outcome on the community efforts, uh, our organizations and for following the principles that have been laid down in, in the document. Uh, however, each item in the roadmap being covered by the current ec ecosystem, by whom and how are they being covered according to the principles uh, in, in the document? What else should be done or initiated by the community? 
and uh, I think this would be a, a nice uh, time point to, to address these issues. So thank you very much, uh, Dominique. This is Dominique uh, Lazansky from the GSMA, just for the first time I'm speaking. I just want to support Marilyn's idea as well about um, looking at the themes that are emerging in the workshop proposals. I think that there are quite a few themes, um, and, and Mark probably looked at it a little bit, that are coming through that are stronger than um, net neutrality. But really, to Mark's point, I think we really do need to have something on, on the overall theme of the, uh, of the IGF, so I'd like to support that as well. Thanks. So thank you very much, uh, Juan Antonio. Well, it's Juan Alfonso, actually. Excuse okay. me, Juan Alfonso. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I think that at this time, we should focus only on those overarching themes that we're certain that we have to have, like WISIS plus 10, like IGF, and maybe like sustainable development. And to leave the rest of the issues to, where, to tomorrow when we discuss uh, the workshops. Also, I want to point out that after putting the, the coffee breaks, we actually have main sessions can be split in two. We can have two mini main sessions for mergers of uh, workshops. I'm not going to anticipate what we're going to do tomorrow, but I sent a few weeks ago a, an email in which I did some quick scanning of the workshops, and I found out, for instance, that in the topic of child and youth issues, we have 15 proposals of, of uh, workshops. So that could be a candidate. Of course, we will discuss that tomorrow. But also in women and gender, we have also many, uh, nearly 10 uh, workshops proposals. So we can discuss that tomorrow. And I repeat, by splitting the main sessions in two, we could have those main sessions like for the mergers. And, and we can solve two problems, you know, have, fill the main sessions and, and also the workshop. And finally, I will suggest to keep even after tomorrow some holes, because maybe net neutrality is an issue today, but who knows that when we approach November, there will be a, a bigger issue, something that is in the news, maybe cybersecurity, there's some other attack, or maybe economy, uh, or maybe something that we will have, we will have no other choice to address it. And so we will, I recommend to keep open to the end. Uh, thank you, Juan Alfonso, uh, for that proposal. So I have um, Ephraim next. Okay, thank you. So I would just like to jump onto that point and also to reiterate Subi's uh, suggestion. As you see, you went through the workshop proposals. There were many proposals on issues on youth and child issues. Uh, just to, to, to bring to the attention of the MAG and to the Secretariat, um, previously there was this form where people could feel about uh, uh, their expertise and what they think they could handle. If that form can be there this time, and uh, we, we would encourage young people to to feel and uh, so that they can be recognized by people who are having main sessions and workshop proposals, so that they can be integrated into the system. Because m the question al is always, how do we uh, integrate these people into? young people and child speakers into this session. So that is a way of recognizing them, for them to express interest if they think they are able to do either remotely or participate physically in the IGF. So thank you very much. Wood uh, was asking for the floor, but now he's uh, whispering to the ear of Mark. And uh, that's why he's lost his his thought, and now I'm asking uh, uh, Leah to intervene. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I have a question. Do we, is, it, is it necessary for us to fill in all the main session slots? So is, is that, we don't, I mean, we don't necessarily have to, right? So if, we don't, if, doesn't, if it doesn't make sense, we can just leave that for workshops and 
hospital, there's less of a clash. Just an observation there. Um, in regards to the, the WISIS IGF um, merger conversation, uh, I think uh, Marilyn and, and Mark covered most of the points that I wanted to, wanted to make. Um, it just seems that we need to reserve some flexibility, uh, as you said, to see what's what's happening uh, with the um, uh, um, with the New York process. Uh, however, regardless of, of the, what happens with the formal consultation, it would be worth retaining the information sharing element of the WISIS plus 10, um, and that perhaps means that it can be part of a shorter session, and it might be worth looking at uh, whether the afternoon on the first day could then be split between like an hour and a half, hour and a half to, to cover um, IGF at 10 and the evolution of IGF and an information sharing element um, a session on the WISIS plus 10. I think that that would um, then enable if there are any consultations taking place on the next day people for, for people and participants of the IGF to be better uh, prepared to participate in that process. On the thematic sessions, um, the I guess I, I agree with the, with previous speakers who have mentioned that there's a need to kind of see what the workshop proposals are. Um, w and it just seems logical, and we haven't really discussed this, but we have sub-themes for a reason, and we haven't really reflected that on the uh, in the main sessions. And, and I wonder whether we should look to reflect the sub-themes that have had the, the most num the, the largest number of proposals. I think there were human rights and cybersecurity and th as the first two. So if we uh, want to be guided by anything, we should be guided by the proposals come that have come from the community. Um, thank you. So thank you. Uh, and uh, last on this topic today is is Mar uh, Maria. One before last, sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. This is Marilia Mancia speaking. I just would like to go back to the point of the thematic sessions, and I'd like to support uh, Su uh, Susan's suggestion to make a thematic session on network neutrality. Uh, last year, we had a session about that. Matt Mundia also recognized that this is one of the key issues that remains uh, open and to be discussed. And the Chair's summary from the IGF last year says that the dynamic coalition in network neutrality should continue to work on a topic and that we should try to find a way that allow the entire IGF community to wait and validate the findings of the Network uh, Neutrality Dynamic Coalition. The coalition has worked throughout the year and they have produced a policy draft statement on network neutrality. It has circulated in different lists. They are also in contact with different regional IGFs uh, and this topic is going to be discussing regional IGFs. So it seems to me that the recognition of the work uh, that has been developed would be to assign a, a, a main session to that, and that would be the, the first option. If that is not possible considering the schedule, maybe we should consider giving the dynamic coalitions an opportunity to report back as a standalone, because we have called them to act and they have acted upon our request, so it is important to give them this space. Thank you. So thank you very much, and we are at you're the last one today. Thank you. Um, firstly, I want to support Joanne's point about the fact that we should keep this discussion high level at, at the IGF at 10. This is right now intersectional work, sustainable development. And I think there are sort of two other points that came out that can be discussed. In the way of themes, I think um, if you look carefully, the intersectional work will represent a set of themes. The Best Practice Forum picks six themes. Um, the dynamic coalitions, each one of them work on a very important theme. And so there is sufficient representation of the sub-themes and themes in that sense. And now if dynamic coalition is going to get in with a two-hour session as being suggested, then that will be another representation of a multiplicity of very important themes. So I don't think we'll be short, but I take Fiona's point, it's a bit different in terms of the optics, um, unlike you know last few years when we had access or one of those things, but themes will be represented. I would uh, rethink the suggestion of having both Business Plus 10 and IGF combined, firstly. I still think they have to be different, and secondly, moving them both to the second day. Uh, that's not a good idea, because we can at least get some people on day one who may not be there on day two, so we're back to the same old, a bird in hand is worth blah, blah. So just want to expand on that. And finally, I think the, the point that was made about leaving the um, main sessions blank so that more workshops can be allocated. The, it, we can leave it blank, but it won't allow more workshops to be allocated because uh, main sessions are not plenaries. 
Uh, so at, or at best, you'll get a room which you can accommodate two 90-minute sessions, two, two 90-minute workshops, uh, because it doesn't in any event come in the way of more workshops. On uh, NetMundial, I just I think uh, it was done last year. I think the dynamic coalitions will have 90 minutes this year, so we should, if we have to, uh, sorry, net neutrality, if we have to think of something, then we should really give uh, either NetMundial a chance or something that is new that we haven't done previously. Uh, I think that will be an important part. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, the last remote participant. Uh, we have actually uh, uh, two uh, interventions, but one is really short. So uh, Haskell, could you please uh, now take the floor? Yes, one question again. I apologize for repeating, but what was meant by the term validate? Uh, there, there was a proposal that uh, uh, what Mar uh, Mauricia, uh, Maria said that the uh, dynamic coalition on net neutrality worked uh, uh, throughout the year and uh, that the session could validate the results of, 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 the, of the work, uh, the document. So that was proposed by Maria. And the second one from Subi. So Subi, please. Thank you, Chair, for the lovely intervention. Just very quickly, I do believe we've said this a couple of times, uh, in session on national and regional IGFs for consideration of colleagues from the MAG. Uh, we don't see this as the same thing as IGFs initiative reporting in to uh, the discussion. It's uh, a structured conversation that we'd like to have with national and regional IGFs and how their issues are different at multiple levels and require different solutions. So a suggestion for consideration, a main session on national and regional IGFs. Thank you. So thank you very much, Subi. Uh, so I have Mission Impossible. Uh, and actually, no, I have mission possible to, just to, <laughs> uh, uh, just to uh, give the floor uh, to EBU. Uh, just to say that I support um, completely both ideas um, about the uh, about the regional and national IGF, I think that uh, it's very important that uh, we have this space uh, and about the dynamic coalition and net neutrality, of course, I think that the topic is important, especially if we will have, uh, before the end of the year, a, a European Union a definite position on that. So thank you, Giacomo, for your um, intervention. No, now I have Mission Impossible. Uh, it is to summarize the meeting, uh, summarize the discussion, and the uh, discussion certainly was not uh, uh, fully uh, conclusive and we will need to continue. But what I understand, we agreed that there should be... Uh, Hassan, please. Thank you, Sher. Um, I just wanted to add, uh, we, we had for this IGF specifically a new uh, sub-theme, which is Internet Economy which goes with sustainable development. And uh, I would suggest uh, strongly to have a main session for Internet economies with sustainable development. Thank you. So thank you very much. The more we have such a concrete proposals, the better we are. Uh, and I hope that, uh, that your proposal will gain also uh, support from other MAG members. Uh, Michael. I just want to speak uh, out on why I think it's not a good idea to have main sessions on relatively narrow topics like net neutrality two years in a row. Um, and if we're going to do that, I think it makes a lot more sense to have a session on surveillance and uh, issues like that. Another issue that we had a main session at in Istanbul that was well attended, I would I, I really just worry that if we do topics like net neutrality year in and year out, we're, we're just going to get bogged down. And we, we need to bring new ideas to the table. The, the newest idea in Washington right now is all about encryption. And I would say that that needs a lot more attention. I don't know if it needs a main session, but it certainly is a hotter topic than net neutrality is. And it will be a hot topic in, in November as well. 
So thank you, Michael. I, I, I will add uh, the c complexity on encryption. I will add the dark digital age because we, we do not know how to preserve digital information unencrypted. And if we will uh, put encryption obligation, then we're really in the ditch. Uh, Makana, please. Yeneka. Yes, uh, uh, Makana from the uh, Economic Commission for Africa. I just wanted to uh, add the voice to my colleagues who uh, should be and others who wanted us to have a session on uh, national and regional ideas. And also, I believe that we need to have a session on dynamic coalitions, one session where all of them will come and, uh, and uh, discuss. Thank you. So thank you very much for these contributions. Uh, but now I will use prerogative of the chair and will conclude this uh, topic uh, without having a decision uh, as I hoped that we would have. Uh, nevertheless, there are some elements that we can identify and that we have agreed. We have agreed that um, uh, one, one of the uh, topics would be IGF at 10 and another session, or we would reserve time, reserve time, uh, to WSIS plus 10 uh, with a view to consult uh, UNPGA office and see whether uh, there would be possibility of informal consultations uh, with the stakeholders on WSIS plus 10 uh, or not. And if that would be possible, we then would uh, provide opportunity throughout a day uh, uh, during the main session to uh, hold these consultations. Uh, if not, then we would revisit those uh, slots and uh, would uh, uh, reorganize uh, main sessions. We also agreed that the best practice forum would be uh, also looking and presenting the outcomes of um, intersessional work on uh, policy menus for next billion online uh, and that um, dynamic coalitions uh, possibly would uh, prefer to have a, a separate slot and we would seek uh, uh, to accommodate that. Uh, we honestly need to uh, see whether opening a session of 90 minutes would be enough if there will be a few ministers, then certainly it will be enough. But if there will be a few dozen ministers, that I'm afraid that this will not be enough. Uh, and, uh, and again, we do not want to turn open session only in a ministerial parade. We would want also to have uh, industry generals and civil society. Uh, um, uh, kings and queens and, and uh, uh, technical community, gurus also speaking. So as a result, 90 minutes may not be really feasible. Um, again, we'll, we, we will see uh, how to accommodate uh, these uh, uh, concerns. Uh, and most likely the decision will be made uh, after this meeting uh, as, as we will uh, proceed and we'll learn more, more information. Uh, that said, uh, I have two. I have noted two volunteers for uh, issues. Uh, Cheryl uh, volunteered to do uh, to be one of the uh, facilitators of IGF at 10, and uh, Marilyn uh, one of facilitators on WSS plus 10. I did not note any other uh, volunteering. Uh, Leah. Yes, thank you, Chair. In fact, just volunteer to uh, participate in the WSIS Plus 10 um, in whatever capacity is needed. Okay, me too. I would like to work with Merlin whenever it's needed on WSIS Plus 10. Uh, thank you very, very much. Mexico. Thank you, Chair. We also would like to work with Merlin. Thank you. Uh, okay, so Marilyn, you are very popular. <laughs> I, uh, um, my, my apologies, my, my memory uh, sometimes uh, fails me uh, on, on names. Uh, uh, Sita, please. Thank you, Chair. I would like to uh, also help uh, Cheryl on the IGF plus 10. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Constance. 
Yes, I'm happy to help with the intercessional one, but of course this is only possible if Brazil helps. So you volunteered for Brazil as well? Yes. Uh, that's good. <laughs> good. So we, we have we have at least something. Uh, Virat. Is it necessary for the facilitators to be um, the MAG member or can they be from the outside? Like a non-MAG member can facilitate? Uh, we depend, depending, we will, we will see. If, if we will like MAG members, then we can invite. But in any case, uh, we're talking about main coordinators. It does not exclude that main coordinators could be held by many other volunteers. Okay, good. Uh, because I would I would like to to have uh, somebody whom to uh, uh, hold responsible uh, that everything goes fine uh, because I want to uh, collect all the glory afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jack, please first. Um, yeah, I would like to volunteer to help Constance in the so intercession. Thank, thank you, Microsoft. Yes, hi. This is Carolyn Wynn from Microsoft. I will also volunteer to help Constance. So thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. So we have we have now uh, some volunteers as well. Everything is noted and recorded, and uh, we will call on you uh, to remind that you uh, did volunteer do this work. So thank you very much. Let us move to the next agenda item, and that that is. Um, uh, discussion on intercessional work. We have two topics here. A uh, topic uh, on um, policy menu for connecting the next billion, uh, which was uh, coordinated by Benedicta and Constance. And we will start with that. And uh, uh, I hope we can agree in about 30 minutes uh, or go through this topic in 30 minutes. Uh, to leave another 30 minutes uh, for uh, best, best practices, updates on best practices, where I have a number of speakers, starting with Marcus, uh, Avery, uh, Jack, uh, and I think Constance afterwards. So please, uh, yes, Mark. Yeah, sorry, uh, Chair, to um, interrupt the flow of the proceedings and so on. There was a proposal for a main session on national and regional IGFs. What, what is the status of that now? Is it, is it going to be discussed further? Or, sorry if I missed a um, reference to that. Thank you. Uh, there are two options. I, I think for the moment uh, we, we should uh, say that this proposal is pending like many others because uh, uh, one can imagine that if uh, uh, IGF at 10 gets uh, three hours slot, uh, part, of that, part of that time could be devoted also to regional national initiatives. Uh, outside, and I, this is not what Marilyn suggested on sort of uh, inter-regional dialogue, uh, that would be kind of a working, working level thing. But I do not want to talk anymore about uh, 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 main sessions, I would like to go on uh, with the uh, other business, and uh, you will start. Benedicto, please, if you could introduce the topic. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Yanis. Uh, well, I was, uh, together with some other uh, colleagues, uh, uh, asked by Yanis to, to, to coordinate uh, and to put forward for your consideration a proposal uh, to, to shape the process towards preparing a document on policy menus for connecting the next billion online. Uh, I don't know if the Secretariat could post the latest version with the amendments that were made. Uh, this document that is uh, that I hope could be posted uh, reflects first uh, some discussion we had among the coordinators and I'd like to acknowledge uh, the participation of uh, Constance which was uh, indeed the, the main uh, drafter and put together all the papers but also Virat, uh, Lin, Santamu, Barrer, Smart and Abridoria, those were also members of, of the coordinating group. We held some one or two conference calls and uh, we, among ourselves, worked a document that was later on shared with the full mag 
and some of you made comments in regard to that document. Yes, uh, okay. So maybe I'll start just to, to read the main features uh, in anticipation of the document to be posted. So basically what we propose is that some principles should guide the preparation of the documents, that the, of course, the process should comply with IGF and MIDE's working principles, that the process should be open and inclusive. Uh, we think those are very important aspects, that it is open, inclusive, transparent, that all stakeholders uh, can contribute and should be able to participate actively in the process. Uh, we intend to capture a diversity of ideas and opinions uh, and views, and while consensus will be encouraged, uh, differences of opinions uh, should also be acknowledged. So therefore, we are not talking about a negotiated document, rather a document that will compile uh, recommendations and best practices. Contributions will be addressed and incorporated in a neutral fashion, uh, and the chair of the MAG, of course, will uh, work with uh, all along the process of preparation of the document to ensure the, it complies with the principles, uh, those principles. So the format of the document we intend to be able to present for the IGF would be uh, in the format of policy menus. So we are not talking about, not necessarily a, a, a single, unified, completely consistent uh, document, but rather uh, a, a document that will contain a variety of, of views, if it is the case, if it is the case. And for that, we intend to use a web platform, uh, allowing for people to, to upload comments uh, remotely. So basically, we are talking about a process we have followed uh, at the Net Mundial, but also in other processes that were led by ISOC and others, through which a virtual platform serves as the main tool for uh, collecting uh, comments remotely. MAG members will be invited to, to work with us. Of course, this meeting is aimed for, for the consideration of MAG members to to consider, and the proposal is that an open-ended editorial group will be established to work on the draft. Uh, a public call for submissions on the team uh, will be issued. Actually, national and regional IGFs have already been appraised of this and in anticipation of our meeting so they can prepare their contributions. And all contributions in relation to the team will be accepted and published on the IGF website. Input from the regional and national IGF will be acknowledged. So uh, here again, we are talking about the transparency. Any comments, any contributions should be made available for, for all to see. Uh, the Secretariat will assist the group of co-facilitators and the open-ended editorial group in extracting sub-themes and suggestions of policy menus for connecting the next billion. So here we, uh, we are talking about some work that is needed to, to, uh, to, to allow the members of the digital group to work on a, a more workable document to be prepared, the first version of this to be prepared by the Secretariat on the basis of, uh, of the contributions received. But again, th the idea of not deleting any comments, rather, trying to put something in a more organized fashion, but without having the ambition to, to <coughs> delete or try to reconcile any conflicting uh, comments, if this is the case. And the draft policy menus will be shared uh, using the online platform, and comments from the public will be incorporated through an iterative process before the final output is presented to the IGF in November. Here we are thinking of allowing the community to contribute to this draft at least in, in two different moments. Uh, the intention to have a first draft to be posted uh, and then we should later on discuss the, the timetable for that. Allow for some comments and then the editorial group would again meet and prepare the final version that would also 
not a final, uh, a second version that would also be submitted to public comments. So the, uh, the document to be presented to IGF, uh, wishfully will uh, have gone through two rounds of public consultations to, to ensure the maximum uh, 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 level of uh, elaboration we can. And the purpose of the exercise will be to gather and present the different policy menus for connecting the next billion online. And again, not, uh, it, it is not intended to be a uh, uh, negotiated document, not to have prescriptive approaches. Uh, as I said before, when divergent views appear on a specific issue, text will be left out or it will be explicitly stated that a variety of views exist. So I think this is something the editorial group will have to deal with as the contributions will come forward and to see how best to deal with, with this. The time frame proposed, uh, well, 27 April is already past us, so there was the, the idea to invite the my community to join this open editorial group, but this is being done now. Uh, the idea is that th at this meeting we will have a final decision of the full mag on the methodology for for developing the document uh, on the basis of the document that is before you. Uh, 26 May uh, we will launch a public call for contributions. Between 14th July and 11 August, will, the first draft will be prepared would be prepared by the editorial group. By September, uh, this uh, the first draft document should be reviewed by the MAG during the third physical meeting. If the meeting will take place, otherwise we'll have to decide how this will take place. Uh, between 8 and 6 October, there will be a second draft open for public comment. Uh, by two, November 2nd, uh, we intend to have the final draft published on the IGF website uh, for presentation and discussion uh, during the IGF meeting. And this document is uh, seen as of today as a living document that will not, uh, that will need certainly to be continuously improved and should also be shared with relevant for uh, in order to, to serve as a, a useful input for, for deliberation, decision making in, in other forums. So I, I think basically that's uh, what I'd like to report, but I would also like to invite Constance to, if, if she wishes to add some, some comments. So thank you, Benedicto. Constance, would you like to add something? Thank you uh, very much. I think I would have little to uh, to add to uh, this this presentation. Um, uh, just perhaps a, a few words to say that we know that uh, the invitation that was made to the organizers of national regional IGFs uh, was uh, was welcome. Um, a number of them, uh, Eurodig, IGF France, I think IGF uh, USA, others have already picked up the theme. Uh, we're expecting contributions um, that will come in very different formats, but as um, uh, Ambassador Fonseca just mentioned, there is no um, obligation to respect any, any format. It's a very free and open, um, open process. Um, so the next step is really to find a way to agree on the timeline and to find a way to engage with other stakeholders, not just the national, regional IGFs. And it's important to have agreement uh, from, from this group on, on the timeline, but also on, on the methodology. Um, a few comments were made on the document. Maybe some of the MAG colleagues uh, would like to reiterate uh, the, those comments orally. Uh, but there was a question about the name. Should it be an editorial group, or should we find something, uh, something else? Uh, there was a request that this editorial group, or whatever we call it, be open to non-MAG members. 
um, it was also mentioned that uh, we should uh, do, we should plan some uh, clear outreach to uh, the, the, the different stakeholders we'd like to involve. Once we have decision agreement from the MAG on the methodology and, and the timeline, we should work with the MAG working group involved in outreach in, in this regard. Um, it was also suggested that uh, the organizers of national regional IGFs be reinvited formally, uh, reminded of this opportunity to, to contribute, um, and they can contribute even if their IGF event has already taken place, as they usually have structures that allow them to, um, to work and, and uh, continue the discussion during the year. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there and uh, maybe invite other MAG colleagues who had comments to reiterate their comments uh, today. Thank you. So thank you very much. I understood that those comments and suggestions have been already taken into account in, in this uh, uh, version. So let me maybe uh, reiterate why we're doing this uh, and uh, what is the meaning of the process. Uh, it, the meaning of the process is to try to respond uh, to those who have uh, called increasingly and uh, 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 permanently on a uh, need to improve outputs uh, or increase outputs uh, from IGF uh, to make it more meaningful for uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, from one side and from other side uh, to link national regional initiatives with um, uh, IGF. This, this is an uh, experiment uh, in every sense of the word. Uh, because we do not know whether that will work or not. How many uh, national regional initiatives will support it and will examine the, the question? I will say if that would be three, four, I don't think we, we should uh, uh, proceed. If that is 10, 12, 20, certainly we should. Because uh, if there is no response from national regional IGFs, means that uh, there isn't really a sort of need for that. Uh, hopefully there will be, and I asked actually Secretariat to uh, make a list of uh, national regional IGFs who have responded in a positive way uh, and make sure that uh, their uh, contributions are submitted in free format uh, to the process. Secondly, uh, I uh, would not like to see and I would like to uh, change immediately on the screen uh, in the timetable uh, part uh, that uh, this will be uh, examined in September, reviewed by the MAG during the third uh, physical meeting. It will be uh, reviewed by the editorial group uh, during the MAG meeting or in conjunction with the MAG meeting and MAG will be participating in this open-ended editorial group alongside with everybody else. And the question whether others uh, can participate or not, if that is open-ended, of course they can. But we need to ensure that uh, there is somebody who holds the pen in this open-ended group. We need to define maybe core, core group people who would uh, feel uh, responsibility for uh, putting ideas expressed during these uh, open-ended working group, editorial group meetings on the paper and making sure that there is a coherence in the text and the things come out uh, in, in a, a logical uh, sequence and, 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 and a good language. So. Uh, I hope that I uh, answered to some of the concerns which have been raised uh, about this process, and I recognize uh, Makan from UNECA, and then um, uh, Izumi afterwards, and Maria. Please, Makan. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, my name is Makan Fai, ECA. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for your uh, comments. Uh, and the clarifications which was uh, put forward by Constance, because uh, uh, some of the IGFs may not meet before September. The African IGF will be meeting from 6 to 8 of September. So um, uh, 
of uh, contribution can be done with uh, consultations with members and not uh, during the meeting, then we could contribute. Uh, but uh, my worry is that uh, uh, they say that uh, the Africa, the IG coordinators have been uh, informed. I'm not sure if this has been done. I, at least in, for Africa, it has not been done. I am aware because I'm a member of the MAC, I'm following up the discussions. But no uh, uh, communication has been sent to the Secretariat for this purpose. And I am not sure this has been done also for other uh, coordinators. So I think we should really make sure this is done properly, that they are informed. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, uh, Fiona. Oh, so, sorry, uh, Izumi first and then Fiona. Thank you, Yanis. Um, so I just want to follow up a little bit about the point that the Constance has raised about the need for the outreach. Um, I really think this is important because um, it could be the case that some of the national and regional IGS are very much interested in the theme, would have wanted to participate, and uh, uh, but if they're not fully aware of what's happening um, and end up being quiet, it's like uh, it's uh, going to be a misunderstanding that there's no enough participation and the lack of interest. Um, so I think this is important, and so in this uh, respect, I think uh, sh send, simply sending this um, an announcement officially is not really. Um, sufficient in um, keeping this uh, national and regional IGF uh, to be fully um, informed of what's happening. So, and since we do have like a variety of uh, MAG members from each of the uh, regions, it would be nice if um, each of us could follow up with their uh, regional IGFs um, in, in our region to make sure that this gets discussed and uh, uh, be a little bit more proactive in uh, coordinating. Um, so I think this is something that um, w uh, maybe something that we can discuss within the outreach group and uh, so something to, to raise as a point of consideration. Thanks. So thank you very much. Uh, actually, there is no need to discuss. Uh, I invite all MAG members to contact uh, those organizers of national regional IGFs that you know and uh, um, uh, invite them to, to do the, this, this thing. Uh, Fiona? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Janice, and thank you to the ambassador and for Constance for the work on this. Um, I had sent some specific um, questions, I think, to the MAG list um, on Sunday with some uh, notes that are things that I thought might be useful for the document to make a little bit clearer. And the reason I say this is that for those that have been involved in the drafting of the, group, of the document, I think you know exactly what you mean by certain things. And for someone looking at it secondhand, it's less than clear. And for those that are going to be actually asked to provide input, it could even be less than clear to them. So I think it would be useful to actually address some of those comments, which are actually suggesting clarifying what certain terms might mean to people, just for the sake of actually making sure you get the input that you actually want. Um, and then the other um, sort of just general question I have on this is that the call for comments, as I understand from the ambassador, is going to be open-ended, meaning there's going to be something on a web platform and anyone can, su can submit comments. This is not specific to the national and regional IGFs, or have I misunderstood what the exercise is going to be. I think that would be helpful because I'm hearing slightly different things and I want to make sure that we're clearly all sort of saying the same thing and not expressing a preference. I'm just looking to understand. And thank you again. Yeah, maybe just uh, have a quick uh, answer to this. Uh, uh, we want to allow anyone who wishes the opportunity to comment, but at the same time, we want to give to, to give some higher uh, emphasis or importance to contributions coming from national and regional IGFs. I think it's one of the tasks for the editorial group to see how this will be reflected in the, in the document, because we'll have wishfully uh, contributions coming from regional IGFs, national IGFs, and from individuals or from institutions. So in the body of the document, we don't want to lose any ideas, any proposal, best practices, but uh, this is something that we will have to deal with, how to, to, to reflect and, and achieve the, the both objectives, to bring on board everything at the same time. And uh, a particular outreach was done in regard to national and regional IGF, besides the general call that will be made. Uh, a particular uh, call and outreach effort was made in regard to national and regional IGFs. And as uh, Constance has uh, proposed, maybe that should be renewed 
and I'm convinced in the light of comments that were made that this certainly should be uh, renewed. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and to add, most probably those national regional IGFs uh, which would take place after September, of course they would be able to submit uh, their input uh, to, the, uh, to the document because the final version will be uh, worked on uh, during the IGF itself as well. So there will, there will be a process when, when the editorial group will accommodate uh, different inputs also coming uh, prior to the IGF. Uh, Maria, please. Thank you, Yanis. This is Marilu Maciel. I, first of all, I'd like to thank Ambassador Benedito and Constance for, for the work and the whole group, of course, for the work uh, being put into the document. I think that this is a great initiative and having been part of the working group on IGF improvements uh, from CSED some years ago, I think that this is an excellent example of what we meant when we were talking about uh, different policy options. And I think that this exercise is, is very, very valid and thanks, Constance, for keeping us informed and on track about what is going on in the intercessional work, your emails are very useful. Uh, I just would like uh, to make some points regarding the document. I understand that this is a document for uh, this moment, for the open consultations and MAG meetings, but I think that if we want to pursue outreach, and especially with, uh, with regional and national IGFs, maybe this document could be uh, clarified, as Fiona mentioned, and, and completed. I miss here an intro note that would kind of explain the importance of the topic that we are talking about, and the motivation for carrying out this discussion through this exercise that we are doing here. Um, maybe some ex explanation about the time, why this is timely, why we are organizing this now, what are the policy menus, because for those involved in discussions, maybe the, the title is, is explanatory, but for others, not that much. Uh, what is the desired goal that we want to achieve? What is the outcome of this, this discussion? And uh, what is the envisioned impact? Where this is will be and taken forward? So I think that these key points uh, will motivate people to participate participate and be engaged in the exercise if we can clarify them. Uh, another thing that I would like to comment, I understand that, that the contributions are, are open-ended and, and this is uh, good, but if we're going to summarize and, and make a draft out of this, maybe it is important for us to give uh, some guidelines of what kind of contribution that we are envisioning, because we can receive very, details, uh, very detailed and, 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 and good contributions, but then we can receive as well uh, very broad ideas in terms of lowering prices or, or fostering competition and I'm not sure if this would be very helpful in terms of drafting. So maybe some, some explanation about what kind of contribution that we're looking for uh, would also be something important. Uh, Ambassador Benedito mentioned that uh, divergent views will be taken into account uh, maybe by uh, including them or excluding divergent views. Uh, my suggestion would be to include them if we're talking about policy menus. Even if things are not uh, consensual, I believe that there is a value in including including always divergent um, views. And just a final point on the document when it says that national and regional IGF contributions will be acknowledged, and, and I think that we mean um, stronger than, than acknowledge the contributions, and they are a key part of the process as we are discussing here, so maybe to change this language to show that we really um, find their contribution very meaningful and valuable. Thank you. So thank you very much. Really, for these uh, contributions, you should be on the group, by the way. Uh, Sagan, please. Now it's your okay, turn. I'm volunteering. Sagan, please. Now is your turn. Sagan. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yo, I just want to provide uh, an explanation concerning the contribution from the uh, regional IGF, especially from Africa. I want to emphasize that uh, enough information has been sent across to the IGF at the African level. And uh, I can attest to that. The West Africa IGF, I remember, I personally sent uh, a detailed uh, information concerning what uh, the condition that they should do as regard the IGF renewal mandate and the IGF uh, 2015 and the vital internet policy issues such as the one that we are discussing here, the policy menu. 
and uh, I got a response that a committee will be set up to look into it and, uh, and provide a police and uh, they are going to provide a position paper uh, for the West African IGL. And I'm also aware that the West African IGL will be having their forum in June and it is one of the top agenda of what they are going to discuss about. Then let me come down to the national level, Nigerian uh, Internet Governance Forum. I'm a member and uh, one of the founding members will discuss extensively on the role that we should, on what role that we should play. So I just want to emphasize and also, also the, the, the bank, the, uh, some facts that uh, information has not been passed across enough to IGL uh, at the national and uh, regional level. But that does not mean that uh, more efforts should be uh, done to ensure that uh, all stakeholders are carried along. I just want to emphasize that information was passed across and from the West Africa IGF and Niger IGF, they are going to make a position paper concerning the, most of the topic that we are talking about, where the national IGF and the regional IGF are supposed to provide input. Thank you. So thank you very much, Sagan, for this information and, and uh, all your support in promoting this idea. I have now Mark Carvel and then Nominate, or you will be speaking on behalf of Nominate. Uh, thank you, Chair Mark Carvel, UK Government. Um, first of all, thank you, um, Ambassador Fonseca and um, the team of coordinators for all this work. It's incredibly valuable. It's very important. Uh, uh, centrally for the IGF um, to uh, to pursue this initiative and uh, in the UK we will certainly um, contribute to it. Um, we've had discussions, uh, Nominet may well comment on that as the uh, UK IGF facilitator. Uh, I, I think it's very important to be proactive um, and to secure the inputs that will ensure the um, geographical diversity of this exercise, of the results of it, uh, and so on. So, um, proactive engagement through the national and regional IGFs worldwide, I, I think, is important to, to, for achieving that, um, for uh, reaching out to communities in least developed uh, countries, in small island developing states, uh, developing countries uh, generally. Is, is, is vital, uh, otherwise it will lose credibility in, in the end result. Um, as to the, the title, policy menus, maybe we should have a look to see if that is the right term that communicates this aim uh, and the end results effectively. Um, I, was, I was thinking maybe using the word options, policy options, uh, if we can perhaps um, tweak, tweak the language to, uh, to enhance the ability to communicate the objectives and, and secure uh, engagement. Thank you. So thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, Nominate, please. Thank you, Chair. Flora Hutchison from Nominate. Um, as Mark said, I, we would welcome the initiative. Um, we think it's a, a valid response um, for calls towards a more action-orientated uh, action outcomes. Um, I would suggest uh, there needs to be some flexibility in the process. Um, the UK IGF event will be held on the 16th of June, um, which obviously is not too long away now, and our agenda is fairly well developed at this stage. Um, so I'd, it's unlikely we'll, we will have a scope for a session sort of specifically focusing on this on the agenda, but we would be keen to contribute where we can. Um, just on the note of flexibility, not all um, regional and national IGFs are the same. Um, so I think there needs to be some flexibility to accommodate that in the process. Um, in the UK, it's not an entity in itself. Nominate provide the secretariat, and we have an organising committee. Um, but in terms of coordinating a UK sort of view to put into the document, um, would be a challenge for us, and we just need to work through how we how we do that. Um, so I, 
I think some, some guidance around what sort of inputs you're looking for and if there would be any tools to support regional and national IGFs in this process um, would be useful. Thank you. So thank you very much. It, seem, it seems to me that uh, at least what I heard until now that there is a, a general support to the approach. There might be some additional uh, sort of editing needed for the document, uh, but a very minor one. But what is needed uh, is kind of a blog exp ex explaining maybe why the reason why we do this, um, uh, which should accompany uh, publication of, of these of these guidelines. When it comes to uh, title, I think we have discussed it since December uh, last year, and and uh, uh, of course menus or options uh, that that the meaning is that this should not be negotiated or indication that this is not negotiated document, but simply a, a putting together existing uh, options that or, or uh, pol policies that uh, have worked in different parts of the world uh, that that could inform those who are looking for advice uh, on that particular uh, topic. We need to, to come to conclusion and I would like to suggest the following uh, that uh, the coordination group maybe uh, work uh, a little bit today, tomorrow, uh, before the meeting and, and then do these necessary changes. Uh, and that in principle we agree with this approach. Uh, we try to answer in, in an accompanying blog uh, to provide a bigger picture why it should be done. And uh, uh, Secretariat would reach out once again, uh, regional, national IGFs, with a request whether any kind of uh, support or guidance, further guidance is needed. And then we would seek uh, your support, support of MAG members, one or two. Uh, from the region who participate in, in, in those meetings to guide and to help uh, the organizers in uh, providing submission. We are flexible uh, in this process and uh, nothing should be seen as a, uh, exclusive or carved in stone. Everything we are experimenting and uh, uh, everything is free to do whatever they uh, uh, think is right uh, to do and after we will do evaluation of the process and then we will see whether uh, further um, uh, kind of changes are needed whether this is sustainable and can should be repeated next year or uh, we should say we tried didn't work takes too much energy away from the process and so on we don't know we will see as, as a at the end of the process. If that succeeds, I would personally see that that would be this national regional uh, coordination event uh, during the IGF, which defines what would be the topic for the next cycle, for instance, because then that would not be imposed by, uh, from, from, from above, but that would be naturally coming out from conversation. Uh, and uh, uh, so then, the ownership of, of this intercessional activity should be uh, with national regional IGFs and IGF uh, uh, should uh, be the platform where the, uh, this intercessional activity uh, come to maturity and, and, and is presented uh, as, as a, uh, 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 the result is presented. Uh, I see that my explanation was not sufficient and Fiona is seeking for the floor, though she said that she would never contradict me anymore in, in entire her life. Just, just to be yeah, clear, yes. I, don't, I don't believe I ever said that to anyone, but <laughs> that's fine. Um, I just would like to voice support for the intervention by Morelia. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to a blog to help explain the messaging, but I don't think you can divorce this document from the importance of explaining it, and I don't think just a blog alone helps do that. So I think if there's some upfront language in addition to a blog, because people will often just look at the one document, not the other. That's my only concern. And I don't know about others, but I'll be having to explain this a lot to a lot of people. And I think just what's up there is difficult for me to explain to other people that haven't been involved. And that's the reason I'm asking these questions and making the request. Thank you. So thank you very much. Benedicto? Yeah, I'd like to, to comment on this. And uh, yeah, I think Marilia and yourself, and are right and 
the Yanis is right as well, uh, in the sense that this document that is here, this is a working document for the MAG to consider the, the concept, the methodology, and to approve it and to, uh, and to allow the process to, to proceed. This was not uh, drafted thinking about uh, making outreach in regard to this. So in that regard, I think uh, some explanation and purpose, as Yannis has said, he proposed to use the blog, but so, so we, we, I think this is something we should not lose uh, time now. Uh, we can, once the MAG agrees with the concept uh, that it is uh, there, I think we can uh, devise ways uh, through which we can uh, in improve the outreach and provide information. Uh, in my opinion, there is one single point in, to which MAG should, uh, we would like to receive guidance from, from the MAG uh, as such, uh, and this refers to the uh, editorial group. We have been calling this the editorial group. I, inside the group, there was some discussion whether that should be called drafting group, and we thought that would not be a good terminology, drafting group. Uh, editorial group was something that emerged as something more neutral. Then this is the basically the idea not to uh, try to reconcile or to negotiate to, to lead to some negotiating outcome, but to more of a compendium and compilation of ideas. So that why editorial group was adopted by the group. Uh, also, there was some discussion on how prescriptive we should be in regard uh, to the inputs we are requiring, whether we should indicate what topics we would like to, to see addressed. And uh, the, the group, there was a majority of opinions in the group that we should not take this approach, that we should not be prescriptive, but rather allow people to contribute uh, to the best of their capacity. And then the, the group would try to, to to, to, to put that uh, uh, document together. We thought we would lose too much energy uh, by trying to, between ourselves, among ourselves, to decide uh, exactly on what should be in the document. But rather, le le leave it to the community and then we can work on that basis. And uh, finally, uh, when I mentioned there is one single point I think we should uh, requires a uh, MAG uh, decision re refers to the composition of this editorial working group. We have not had a, a conclusion in the group whether it should be restricted to MAG members or it should be opened up and it also includes non-MAG members. There was a, a diversity of views uh, and both sides have both both approaches have merits and, and problems. Uh, if we restrict it to MAG members, we, in the MAG, we already have uh, wide representation, the different stakeholders we, we have within the MAG, the, the assurance we have diversity and representativeness, so I think that could be an approach. But there was a point that also no MAG members should be allowed if they wish to participate. So I think this is one point that either now or later on, Mr. Chair, is, uh, we would like to seek uh, the guidance of the full MAG on how to proceed in regard to that particular aspect of the methodology that is being proposed. Thank you. So thank you, Marilyn. You want to talk on, on this topic? Uh, yeah, uh, answering, uh, answering uh, Ben Victor, your question, I, th I think if we call it open-ended editorial group, uh, it is open-ended, meaning everyone, MAG, non-MAG, uh, citizen, non-citizen, everyone can participate in, in that. What most probably we're talking about, uh, whether uh, we should, uh, when, if we're talking about those people who will be really holding uh, pen to the paper and, and then who will be really uh, working on the document, taking listening output, whether they should be from uh, from MAG uh, only or not. So that that is something uh, that what we may want to reflect on, though I. Again, on these technical questions, uh, we may spend too much time uh, and arrive to, to a conclusion that um, uh, these people, whether they're in the mag or not, uh, should be good writers, that they should be uh, good in, in uh, editing and formulating uh, their, their thoughts uh, and views that they hear uh, during the conversation. 
So, and, and usually the, these type of core, uh, core working groups, uh, they, they are not, not more than 10 people uh, who then uh, really uh, do, do the, the write, writing, but taking into account every, uh, everything they hear and, and then, uh, so. Uh, if we take 10 as a, as a potential number, then that would be two per uh, constituency, for instance, might, might, might be good. Uh, but that, that we may uh, leave uh, for reception and see uh, how, how constituencies want to proceed. Uh, Marilyn, please. Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Kate speaking. I'm very fortunate that um, when I presented the um, call uh, received from the Secretariat to the IGF USA that there was great enthusiasm by some of our members. I want to just mention this very quickly because I will say that the, um, this topic did not, um, in our public consultation, this topic would not have made it into the um, uh, workshop themes for the IGF USA. But we established a uh, parallel group of those who are interested to work on this. So that's how we're addressing it. And the interesting thing is those people are going to be working not only uh, to report out at the IGF USA, which is July the 16th, but uh, in Washington, D.C., but then they will continue to work. The one comment that I want to make um, in talking to the three or four people who volunteered is they're looking for some structure. The, and my experience with the mapping exercise at CSTD is the more open-ended you are in how you take content in, the more challenging the task is for the, those who need to analyze it and to identify or perhaps data mine the gems that are in it. So I offer that as a thought without proposing that there be a lot of structure. I think um, some ideas would be very helpful. Um, finally, I would just say, I do think we should be open to the idea of uh, adding a small number of non-MAG members. The real issue to me is accountability of the, um, of, the, of the group. That is, people who can sign up, do the work. MAG members are carrying a lot of work, and it may be that we would find that um, adding in some non-MAG members who are willing to commit might actually uh, augment the resources that we have available. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would agree that having a little bit of extra structure might be helpful because I think most people can look at this topic and there are so many things that lead up into it. You can interpret it in many different ways. I also agree that we need to find a way to keep it open. In particular, uh, the different threads that will come up, there may be members of the community that have a greater amount of expertise than some of us on the MAG that may be uh, helping with it. And so we wouldn't want to lose out on that. Yet at the same time, we want to keep accountability, as Marilyn mentioned, and keep the ball rolling. I don't know if maybe there's a way to have a two-tiered sort of group um, where I know the ambassador earlier um, mentioned having, or perhaps you did, Mr. Chair, uh, different um, stakeholder groups have e two people each. Maybe they can be kind of leading um, you know, the, a broader group of editors in some way. Uh, it's just a thought that I throw out there, but um, maybe that's a way we can kind of try to achieve the best of both worlds. Thank you. So thank you very much uh, for confirming what I, what I tried to say. Indeed, we do it open-ended fashion, but we need somebody who physically uh, uh, holds the pen. Lynn, would you like to speak? You, you're, I saw your uh, flag was up at one point. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I took it down in the interest of time and in that I um, supported uh, Ambassador Fonseca's comments um, completely with respect to some of the next steps. And in parallel, um, Constance and I have been saying that we'll meet um, following your suggestion um, either later or tomorrow. And we were trying to reach out to Mariella <laughs> as well um, to try and progress it quite quickly in the next 24 hours or so. 
So thank you very much. I think that uh, we can then conclude this part of the conversation. Uh, so I, I take that uh, MAG in principle agrees with the suggested approach. Uh, there will be modifications in, in the paper uh, based on uh, what what was said uh, during uh, these, these uh, 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 consultations. We will add uh, um, uh, sort of a chapeau explaining why this is happening uh, and uh, also uh, I will ask Secretariat maybe to think about uh, kind of a, a, a template uh, for contribution uh, because I hear that uh, that seems might, might be uh, useful. Uh, so with that we could move, if that is acceptable, uh, if Fiona says yes. Please, you have a chance to say that this is acceptable. Well, I, this is fine. I just have one, one last question, a question of substance. Um, so the proposal actually talks about getting input from the intercessional period and presenting it in, in I won't even attempt to say the name of the town. I'll give Mark that opportunity again. <laughs> um, but is there, is there no thought of actually incorporating any input from the IGF itself? Would that happen at a later date? I'm just curious to understand the thoughts of the group on that. It seems like a missed opportunity to not have a plan to incorporate that. So just a last question of substance. Thank you. Uh, uh, so thank, thank you very much. Uh, my, my, my question is where you were uh, 45 minutes earlier. Why didn't you ask this question earlier? That, no, I'm, I'm joking. So we will have, we will have time maybe uh, informally to, to think and talk, talk through and, 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 and uh, cer certainly everything should be incorporated which is relevant to the topic. And if that comes out from IGF, I wouldn't be surprised that somebody, for instance, would do the work and, and would pick up everything that in previous nine IGFs has been said about uh, uh, policies to uh, stimulate access uh, and would present it as an input. Why not? One can dream that somebody will do that type of job. Maybe NMI or GIPO through, through their platforms, automated. Uh, so let us move to the next uh, item, and that is... Uh, that is Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, Peter, we lost you. Can you hear me now? Uh, now we can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you. First of all, apologies for not being there in person, <coughs> and good luck for the uh, rest of the session. Just a tactical comment, and really a raised reference to it earlier. Uh, about the CSTD work on improving the IGF, it might be good tactics, uh, if not good manners, to look for the link to this work to the recommendations on improving the IGF. And from memory, uh, and I've just posted a link to the document so people can check. Um, there is reference in there to outreach to other uh, internet governance organisations, which this proposal seems to fit into. So it's perhaps as part of the explanation that you talked about, because I, for one, have a little bit of difficulty, I think, like Fiona and others, in understanding exactly what a policy menu is. It's probably a term of art for people in policy development um, work, but not for everybody. So as part of that explanation, reference back to uh, the outreach parts and any others in the um, CSTD document might be helpful. And perhaps take that as a slight theme for the rest of the meeting. Um, if we can look to anchor uh, the work that we're doing in those recommendations, that might be, as I say, the good politics and, and good manners. Thanks. So thank you, Peter. Ac actually, this is exactly, this is a direct response to recommendations uh, link linking the regional and, and national IGFs with, the, with this IGF. Um, and thank you for your, your um, uh, input. Uh, let us move now to best practices, and we have um, uh, six uh, themes uh, which we're working on, and I would like to uh, invite uh, Marcus uh, to present uh, a state of uh, preparation for two of them. Thank you, Chair. And we actually noticed that at least one of them is also closely linked to connecting in the next billion, as the threat scenario will also change as the next billion will come online. Uh, well, I'm happy to report that the work for both uh, 
best practice forums on unsolicited communication and C certs are well underway. Uh, we were fortunate that we could build on the excellent work uh, that was produced last year. Now we have also a little bit more time to consolidate and deepen this work and uh, we agreed together with the all, all other best practice forums that papers that should be the input into the Joao de Pessoa meeting should be ready by end of September and that should go then unaltered into the meeting so we would give enough time to participants to familiarize themselves with the paper to government people to circulate it within the various ministries that are involved in this work. Uh, it will be an iterative process. Uh, we have, as I said, more time than last year, but if you look forward, it's not that much more now left. We have a good four and a half months to produce uh, papers. Uh, now let me go a little bit into uh, the substance uh, of both of uh, these uh, best practice forums. There are linkages between the two, best practices on unsolicited communication and on C certs. Well, you will recall that one of the decisions last year of the experts was actually to change the title. The title given by the MAG was CERT, but they felt that the acronym CERT, that is Security Emergency Response Team, was not any more accurately describing their work as the work is more related to security incidents and not emergencies. Last year, the experts came up with seven possible uh, areas of work for future work, and so far we held a number of calls, the last one last week, and we have reduced these seven issue areas to four, and uh, one of them is a horizontal one, which is basically that the experts found there are many misconceptions of the functions and tasks of C CERT. So there are essentially only three uh, issue areas left. One of them would be what is the national point of contact or the C CERT of last resort. Then we discussed the development of case studies and lastly also privacy and free speech and it seems that this one is emerging as one of the favorites for a main focus for this best practice forum and that is also a strong link to the uh, best practice forum on unsolicited communication. Uh, it is sort of colloquially referred to as SPAM, but we have found that SPAM is actually not necessarily a word that, uh, a terminology that attracts attention because many people, especially in developed uh, economies, feel that SPAM is not a problem anymore. But here again, we would like to recall that this is unsolicited communication is a vehicle for infections and threats and also attacks that are far from no longer a problem. They are a pro an underlying problem that still exists. So we are working on these issues and on both we feel that we lack enough or sufficient participation from the developing world. This is in particular relevant uh, for SPAM. You may recall that spam was seen as a problem at Wicked in Dubai in end of 2012. It was sort of picked up then also by the IGF, but we have not been able to identify what the real problems are in the developing world. And we do know there are problems, but this is an appeal for more participation from developing countries. If MAG members can help and reach out in their countries, in their respective countries and regions to experts, that would be most welcome. We would be happy to give a more detailed uh, briefing uh, to MAG interested MAG members. Uh, some of them 
are already involved, not that many, and we would certainly welcome if more MAG members joined. And with that, maybe I ask uh, Wout, who is holding the pen, who is the expert driving the work, whether he would have any additions to add to this short overview presentation. Please, Wout. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Walt Natus, the consultant on these two groups. The, the only comment I would like to make in addition is that the, what we previously discussed on the next billion uh, coming on board is one of the topics that the unsolicited uh, best practice forum, also unsolicited communications best practice forum, actually saw as a next major problem because all on coming on board are basically going to be on mobile and not on fixed. What are the lessons learned 10 years ago in, in developed countries that actually could be translated straight into best practices? So that is something that we would like to, to, to discuss further within our group, but that means that we could actually collaborate quite well probably with the work that's going to be done. So that's a, an invitation from our side, and to reiterate, we really need the input from the developing countries to really know what their problems are, because I can write that from my study in the Netherlands, but it's not going to be that convincing if there's no underlying data. And that's the m another main topic. We're going to go for reliable, neutral data, and for that we need probably a lot of participants who are in the room here to provide that sort of data. So that's what we're also going to be reaching out for. So thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions, or, or should we uh, ask questions to uh, coordinators after all presentations? Maybe that would be the, the better approach. Avri, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, so the one I've been working on and, and helping to coordinate with Brian Gutterman, the uh, expert on it, is on the multi-stakeholder. Uh, and um, basically what we started with, since this is a continuation of one from before, we started with last year's paper, which was very much a normative piece of work on, on, on what should be. Uh, and basically, we put it in a drive document for a couple weeks, got a certain number of edits on it, and then basically got stuck for a little bit. We had had a bunch of edits, we talked about it, and, and then we weren't making uh, much, much forward movement. Uh, but a few interventions later, and, and we got going, we had a meeting. What has happened now is that Brian took that paper and took some other inputs that had come in and basically produced a synthesis of it. We, we ha and that's being looked at at the moment by, by the group. We had a meeting and basically decided on the next steps. So the next step is we're spending the next week or two going through this the synthesis of what had been there before. We have another meeting scheduled next week, at which point we're going to put out a call for basically people to offer the best practices that they have found. What methods, what techniques, what have you. And we've talked about it being four weeks, but I'm thinking closer to six weeks, given that it's June going into July, to sort of collect inputs from, from people. We'll do another synthesis of those into a paper. Uh, and then take that last piece of work and open it up again to, to the live editing. We've been using Google Drive because it was trivially easy to set it up, but basically been using that as our vehicle, and then try to take that stepwise refining it through to, to the meeting uh, at the end of the year. So, so we're basically, have the normative, now working on collecting the practical, and hopefully produce something fairly coherent by the time we get to the IGF. So thank you very much. I see who is your sponsor, uh, and also the reason why, why Brian is not, not uh, present uh, in this meeting, uh, he told me he is uh, looking for the car. He, he wants to buy the car. Uh, not a uh, uh, simple car, but with the registration plates, just married. So he's, uh, he's getting married uh, this coming weekend. Uh, all the best, Brian. If uh, you are uh, listening to us, uh, good luck for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
if I can add, we, we did some of our timing based on his, his, his marriage and his moving plans, so that was part of our, our, our forcing function for picking dates. So, uh, thank you. Let me now call on, on Jack uh, on, the, um, uh, on the work stream on, on um, uh, practice to counter abuse against women online. I understand that, Jack, you are working on that. Thanks, um, Yunus. I'm reporting on the Best Practices Forum on the topic of countering abuse of women online. I co-facilitate this topic with Subi with support from Anri from the Secretariat. Um, and we've had good progress. Um, we started with a discussion on the mailing list and we have had two online meetings so far with fairly good, uh, fairly good participation. Um, we've thus far discussed around the process. Um, where well, we've agreed to have fortnightly online meetings to keep the, um, I guess, to keep the, the conversation momentum forward and to be consistent and building on, on, on the discussions. Um, and we are, also, we, will, we are also using the mailing list very actively to share information and to also use that as a, as a platform for conversation for some of us who cannot be online or you know, whose access, um, because the, the platform doesn't always work for everyone. Um, and timing as well is a little bit tricky. And then we had a discussion around getting broader participation, um, especially in terms of languages um, in different regions. And we, would, we had a brief discussion around how we could link up to regional and national IGS as potential avenues for, for facilitating discussion and inputs into this topic, and who might want to take it up amongst us um, in, in, in who are interested in this area. Um, and also um, needing broader stakeholder participation. So we're doing an exercise of ma mapping, mapping key stakeholders and, and trying to do um, active outreach. Um, but we'd also like to use this opportunity to enlist the support of our MAC members as well as broader community members to um, really um, uh, take part um, in this important conversation as well and to help us in, in some outreach. Um, so thus far, we're, we're really actively sending out um, invitations to, to, the, to the online meeting as well as to participate in the mailing list. Um, and we've also set up Twitter and Facebook pages for further outreach, but understand that there may be some issues around representing it as a, as a MAG activity or as an IGF activity. But in the interim, we're thinking of things like having hashtag conversations at least around, you know, trying to mobilize more discussions around this, especially amongst young people. Um, so, in terms of um, the discussions and, and the substance of the issue, um, we've mapped out, um, so, so far we've mapped out um, the issue in terms of, um, we've outlined the parameters of the discussion, we've started with that, we thought that it is actually imperative for us to understand, because it's a new um, thematic area, so we thought one of the first things we really needed to do was just to really see what is the parameters of it, what is this universe that we're, that we're talking about, um, we did this in an, in an, in an open, um, in, in an etherpad where, um, where everyone was invited to input into the etherpad and then we had a meeting to talk about, um, to further populate um, this, this the, 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 I guess the, the content of this map. Um, and we more or less agreed that um, these are the different sections that we will be discussing on. Um, and, 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 and there's been some input into what the different sections um, constitute as well, which I won't go into, otherwise it'll be too long. Um, but we talked about the types of uh, violence or abuse, wh what are these, um, what are some of the contrib contributing factors, the impact of um, such violence or abuse, including the specific role that technology plays, so, so what, that it's um, that, um, th that is happening online or that um, the internet is being used. Um, possible issues of conflict or contentious issues. So, for example, jurisdictional issues, um, internet intermediary responsibility, competing rights and interests. These were things that we thought will probably come up for for the discussion. Um, and then solutions or strategies or responses. And this encompass both legal, non-legal, technical, community, as well as individual and other approaches. Um, and we also talked about good practices, not necessarily best practices. We recognize that this is an emerging area and that there are still sort of exploratory um, measures um, that, um, that are being taken to address it. So good practices for now will, will be good for us to identify. And of course, some um, stakeholder mapping. So as I mentioned earlier, who may be a key part to the conversation. Um, so the discussion so far has been largely based on existing and new research and knowledge building um, work in the area, um, which will be then further shared on the mailing list and hopefully be able to be consolidated and shared and published in one platform. 
Um, we aim to produce a tangible output by the 9th of October um, to gain broader community input before the IGF. So it gives us about a month to get likes of comments and inputs. Um, and again, I think at this point we would really, um, uh, we would really um, like to um, ask for the support um, uh, by uh, by all MAC members um, here in order to help us in outreach, um, to participate in this important conversation, especially by governments and members of the technical community and the private sector. Um, we have quite good representation from intergovernmental organizations because of specific outreach that we've done. So for example, um, uh, UN Women and, uh, and uh, ITU, um, and also CSOs and academics, but um, we are lacking in terms of our participation from the other stakeholders. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you. I, I also would like to um, introduce the uh, secretary point person, which is Anri van der Swan from the Cape Province in South Africa. Um, she's the one who is dealing with the group. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next is IPv6, and I understand that this is uh, uh, Izumi who is. Uh, Yes, so I'd like to give an update on the IPv6 best practices. So on this group, myself, um, Susan, her man are leading this group, uh, and uh, as well as uh, Wen will be helping us uh, in compiling the document. And I think we really have a good team where Susan has the expertise from last year's best practices in coordinating and getting things to be organized. And then her man and myself has the expertise in terms of the contents and have reached to the experts on this topic. And um, in terms of the overall timeline, uh, we're thinking of publishing documents in three steps. First, to publish a background paper around the end of June so that people have some ideas on um, the motivation behind um, promoting these best practices and uh, so that we all have a shared understanding of the issue. And this would hopefully encourage people to share specific case studies and anecdotes um, on this topic. And then um, as a second step, uh, we plan to publish a draft document on the best practices before the IGF meeting so that people have some time to take a look, then have face-to-face -face discussions. Finally, then after the um, IGF meet, uh, meeting, uh, fix a, a document on, on the best practices. So that's um, in terms of the overall timeline that we have in mind. And um, in terms of the contents, um, we actually feel that it is very important to draw clear lines that this is not the best practices on the technical um, issues on IPv6 networks, but rather how the measures and activities that uh, people have taken to encourage um, creating an environment uh, on IPv6 deployment. This is very important uh, um, to line to, to be clear about. Um, and I, I think this issue that uh, Marcus has raised on um, encouraging um, the developing countries to provide input as well as the developed countries, this is an important point. So we have actually uh, been working on outreach on our groups. So we have I'll, I'll reach out to the RIRs who have ex expertise on this subject, as well as they have the regional coverage covering th five regions. This would ensure uh, that we have um, input from different regions in the world. And I think um, we can also um, consider different ways on how people can contribute. So maybe some people with um, experience can contribute in terms of sharing their ex actual experience, whereas people who don't have the experience can provide input in terms of what would be the kind of information that would be good to be uh, put into the document. So these are the things that we're thinking of trying to outreach the people. And so, and the current status is that um, we've circulated um, the draft um, components of the contents as well as the scope and uh, goal of the document, um, calling for comments. And we'll be actually having a call um, tomorrow with the, with the group. So that's what we are, where we are. And and so as the next steps, um, we would like to have more concrete discussions on what, would, uh, what should go into the, the background document and uh, also fix on the general timeline and, um, and the scope of our group. So I'd like to see from Susan or her man would like, like to add anything. Thanks, Izumi. Um, I have very little to add. You, you covered everything quite well. 
Um, uh, just, just two points, I guess. One, a very practical one. Uh, we are asking um, for people to submit their publications on IPv6 adoption um, from all over because we'd like to collect all these documents and have, um, have them be contributed to the repository. Uh, which can further inform uh, the substance of the the document that we will eventually um, publish. And uh, second point, I just I wanted to express um, I guess my kind of my eagerness or excitement because we will be reaching out through the RIRs to the general technical community and to the people who actually um, work with IPv6 adoption and I think this is a this is a great opportunity to involve um, people who otherwise wouldn't uh, be participating within the IGF uh, to contribute uh, to to this to this exercise um, so yeah thanks so thank you, thank you, Izumi. Thank you, Susan. I, actually, we have passed the point of eventuality. We will produce a document. We're condemned to do that. So, and, and I understand that Vim will help you with that. Vim? Uh, yes, indeed, I will help uh, with the IPv6 best practice forum, but I'm also involved for the Secretariat in helping the uh, IXP uh, forum, so I will give the update. Um, so far, not much activity has happened on the, uh, on the mailing list, uh, but that is because we are still busy to select some uh, coordinators. Uh, at this point, there are three uh, coordinators. Uh, it's uh, Desiree Zakaria Mac member uh, from Caribbean, uh, uh, Bijal uh, Sangani from uh, Eurix, and also Gael Hernandez from um, uh, PCH. Uh, they had, so the coordinators had one first call, uh, their first call to, well, exchange stuff, first of all, to, to meet each other uh, online and to uh, explore the, um, uh, the topic. Um, there are some notes um, that will be distributed, be distributed to the list, but the, I think the most important is that a uh, planning uh, conference call with, um, well, an invitation for the conference call that will go to the list uh, for next week, the 27th, Wednesday the 27th at, uh, at lunchtime. Uh, the due date call for that was uh, closed today, so I expect the, uh, the link will be available in, uh, in the coming date, days. Um, from that first meeting, there is, I think, one idea that came uh, a little bit forward. It's not really a, a fixed, uh, fixed plan yet, uh, but it is to focus on uh, establishing, uh, establishing IXPs uh, and looking to uh, different examples, um, different best practices, but also what kind of um, environmental factors, uh, positive or negative, uh, could help or could uh, hinder establishing a successful uh, IXP. Um, that's all for, uh, for this moment. Um, I mean, the three coordinators are also looking at this moment within their network to, uh, to get more experts and especially people um, from outside the, uh, the IGF world because one of the topics that came up um, in the discussion or was shared from well, we should give some introduction on, uh, on IGF and uh, internet governance because we really want to have people that are not yet involved uh, to get them on board and uh, we will need to explain them why, uh, why it's necessary. Uh, that's it, so the most important is um, the invitation for uh, the, uh, the open uh, WebEx call, uh, it's ne next week, Wednesday, at uh, lunchtime, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Geneva time. Thanks. So thank you very much. Now, uh, if there are any comments, questions, I, I see Netherlands, Arno. Thank you, Chair Janis. Uh, we're happy to provide input for the uh, best practices document on IPv6. As during the Dutch Cyber Week uh, this year, the website internet.nl was launched by the Internet Standards Platform, a collaboration on uh, organizations from the Internet community and the Dutch uh, government. On this website, visitors can check whether their Internet is up to date. 
Uh, ex for example, is, is your con internet connection uh, safe? What about your email and website? Uh, is the, are they actually using modern secure internet standards? And if not, what can you do about it? Um, the internet belongs to all of us, as we all know, but most people uh, are not aware of how the technical fundament of the internet is, is working. It's invisible and unknown, unknown to most of its, its users. And as a consequence of that, modern secure internet standards are often implemented too late or not at all. And that's the context in which the internet standards platform was founded and the internet.nl website was launched. It is applicable for all organizations and institutions uh, across the globe, so you can uh, try it yourself. Um, through internet.nl, visitors can easily and automatically check whether their internet connections, email and websites support modern secure internet standards. If one or more standards are not up to date, the user gets guidance on how to improve this. And currently, the portal covers the following standards, IPv6, DNSSEC, TLS, DK, SPV, and DMARC. The current website, internet.nl, is the first public release. The platform will continue to improve and extend the website, and feedback is appreciated. And as I said, we are happy to uh, provide further inputs uh, into this uh, important document, uh, based best practices on uh, IPv6. Thank you very much. So thank you, Constance. Yes, thank you. Just to, to add to that, um, that uh, we did, a, because some of the groups pre-existed from last year and some of the groups are new um, in 2015, we did a coordination call with the different coordinators, facilitators of these uh, various groups just to exchange insights, share some tips on how to um, lead the discussions. Um, and as a result, I mean, we also uh, acknowledge that each group should develop its discussion and its output document um, in, uh, in its own specific uh, fashion. Um, also to mention that work is currently being done on the IGF website. I've heard from many people outside of the MAG uh, group that it's difficult to find the mailing list, it's difficult to find the framework document for each of those themes. Um, so the IGF Secretariat is working on compiling the information and making it easily accessible for newcomers. So hopefully um, we will be able to do more outreach and get more people engaged in those best practice um, tracks in the coming weeks. Thank you. So thank you very much, remote participant. Um, he said heading down, never mind. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> so, uh, I think that that has exhausted the request for the floor. We, we are about 30 minutes late uh, in relation to schedule. Uh, but nevertheless, it's better 30 minutes than nothing. And this time was uh, requested specifically for MAG members to cluster in, in, in the room. And uh, uh, depending on interest and participation of uh, best practice uh, 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 work. So now it is, is time. Uh, if uh, our uh, NMI representatives would uh, specify uh, the modalities of uh, reception that you cordially invited us and time, or well, that would be Secretariat who would do that. Yes, I can do that. Um, it's um, down the hall, the restaurant you see when you came in, if you came in through the lower floor, that's where the reception is. It's 6.30. And hopefully they can start sooner because we're... In, a, in, in, any, in any case, uh, Cengitai will check whether that is at 6 or 6.30, but in, 30. In, the, in the meantime, uh, we suspend open consultations and, and then session of today, allowing time for uh, informal gathering and, and discussions that MAG members may wish to, to have. We're meeting tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock, and uh, we will start, as we agreed, with the selection of workshops. 
weaving uh, consideration of um, uh, weaving consideration of open forums, uh, uh, dynamic coalitions, interregional dialogue uh, for after decisions will be made on uh, workshops. So uh, tomorrow at um, uh, 10 o'clock in this very room is. Yeah, there, there was a there was a general um, uh, comment from Haskell. So uh, uh, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Haskell Sharp from Cisco. Um, I did not really hear my uh, intervention from this morning addressed directly. So I'd just like to ask that it be taken into account in the MAG meeting, and hopefully provide a uh, a, re a reply or. A solution, you know, at the end of the meeting, which is there's a request, it seems like, for validation of work. Um, you know, this time it happens to be, I think, the uh, Dynamic Coalition on Net Neutrality, but it could be any Dynamic Coalition or Best Practice Forum or other. And I do not know what validation means in the context of IGF. I don't think there has been a case where the IGF has validated the work of a, of a group. So. I just wanted to understand, you know, what the process would be and what it would actually mean. Thanks. So thank you, thank you very much uh, for this uh, question. Uh, actually, uh, indeed, there hasn't been validation, and uh, we do not know what that would mean. Uh, we we uh, we certainly uh, discussed that uh, there should be interaction and some kind of feedback uh, between dynamic coalitions and uh, IGF uh, or any other uh, groups that are created uh, as IGF initiative. Uh, simply that is exchange of information. So from one side. From other side, as, as you probably uh, know that the working, uh, CSTD working group on IGF improvements is asking uh, for more uh, structured outputs from uh, IGF. And um, one of the probability is that if there is something which is mature enough and accepted by all uh, that could be presented as IGF output on any topic, uh, so then it could be uh, somehow uh, endorsed, validated, or, or whatever by uh, by IGF and presented as such. All this is hypothetical where we know what uh, outputs uh, so far has been or have been. These, these are uh, compilations of uh, reports from every uh, workshop which is provided by organizers. Not necessarily we have 100%, but we have them. This is a narrative report on IGF, and that is Chairman's uh, summary uh, of, of IGF. Uh, we're now working on other uh, new type of outputs. Last year we uh, experienced uh, or experimented with best practice forums that seemed to be were uh, accepted and, and seen as a, a potential uh, way forward. We're repeating this year. Uh, we're experimenting now with intersessional work with the team uh, policy menu for next billion. Uh, now we're increasingly uh, looking at uh, interaction with the dynamic coalitions and we, in that respect, I believe Maruya, uh, we're suggesting that some kind of validation might be done uh, for the document which is mature enough. Whether that is the case on net neutrality, I don't know. I am not an expert on net neutrality. Pretend to be, but, <laughs> but I'm not. So, uh, and this, this, is, this is the ongoing process uh, that we are uh, consulting and discussing, and uh, we'll see how far we can get. I hope I answered your question. And now we could uh, break uh, for informal consultations on best practices, and this meeting stands adjourned. It uh, remains to thank interpreters who uh, helped us uh, today, as well as scribes uh, for uh, their work uh, during uh, today. Thank you. Meeting stands adjourned.